Welcome everyone to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. I'm sitting in for Alex while he's out of town doing a little bit of uh, reminiscing from the days that he covered uh, America Destroyed by Design. He's out in the Southwest and he'll be back next week. Um, if you heard today, Aaron Dyke sat in on the radio and did a great job. He did, uh, he even went to overdrive. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we got a lot of people doing a lot of different things here, and this is my first day sitting in uh, anchoring the InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up, we're going to have uh, Gerald Salente pop in. He uh, sent me an email this morning with some breaking news that he found, and uh, we're going to talk a little more about uh, we're going to talk a little more about that, and it has to do with the MF Global scandal that's going on right now. And uh, also, we're going to talk with Andrew Kautz from Digital Trends. He's a writer there, and we're going to talk about internet censorship and where it's going, and also talk about the EAS takeovers that are slowly going to be encroaching into the web and onto your Xbox and onto your uh, online player games. So uh, be looking out for that. But first, the news. Super Mario. He's been announced and ordained as the new leader of, of Italy. Bilderberg leader Mario Monti takes over Italy in a coup, reports the New American. On November 16th, the new prime minister, who also served as Italy's economic minister, announced that he was appointing an array of bankers, technocrats, and lawyers to lead the emerging government. After unveiling proposed reforms later this week, Monty and his unelected team will face parliament and a confidence vote. So what it looks like there is uh, Mario's taking a page from the U.S. He's appointing bankers and lawyers and uh, people that really have no business running government into government positions so they could probably take what's left of Italy. Not very good. Mario Monti is also a uh, Bilderberg member. And um, we have uh, in Zero Hedge reporting, the technocratic revulsion begins. Photos and videos of thousands of Italians protest Monti's banker government. We got some video here. And uh, we also posted this on Prison Planet today. Technocrats, this is a term Gerald Salente uses, are bureaucrats who know how to use computers to cook the books. So uh, you have students out there chan chanting, we don't want banks to rule. Monty's government is not the solution. Students in Italy's financial capital threw firecrackers at police trying to prevent them from approaching Bonacci University which is chaired by Monty and has become a symbol of the new executive of technocrats that has been formed to tackle Italy's new debt crisis. So there's a lot going on in Italy now. We can expect a lot of fireworks coming and what you see in Italy and what you see in the European Union will be coming here. And Alex has already told you a lot about that. And uh, we'll have Gerald Salente popping in a little bit later to talk about our next story, a little bit about this. MF Global, money now missing after reports it was sent to J.P. Morgan. Over $600 million in customer funds that was transferred out of MF Global, now we know it's closer to a billion, like 900 million, and a wave of su suspicious trades before the collapse of the financial broker has now been declared missing, despite the fact that it had been placed within an account uh, of Wall Street giant J.P. Morgan. So what does this mean? Well, what do you expect? J.P. Morgan is, uh, well, just look at the robber baron. Look who it's named after, uh, J.P. Morgan himself. Just this year, this is a collection of articles that we, uh, that we found for looking at about 15 minutes. Here's one from Business Insider. J.P. Morgan banker will serve two years in prison for stealing $1.2 million from customers. And we have a quote here. The guy's name was Howie Wang. He was using someone else's personal info to obtain a $100,000 loan from J.P. Morgan after which the DA says he spent 10000 and then transferred the rest into a foreign account. Hmm. Um, allegedly setting up an account pretending to be a J.P. Morgan customer and then transferred $250,000 of that client's money into the fake account. He allegedly used the personal info of two J.P. Morgan customers to transfer $139,000 plus and $700,000 from their accounts into Wang's account outside the country. And what did he get? He got two years in prison. The prosecutor went for three years but the judge and the jury only gave him two. So uh, there you go. And here's another one from a, an aptly named website, Chase Bank Sucks. And uh, Chase admits to stealing from US military families. Yeah, and there was a lawsuit on this filed and we'll show you that in a second. Uh, basically they were violating the Federal Service Members Relief Act law that was enacted to shield deployed military 
personnel from financial distress. Basically, Chase overcharged roughly 6,000 active duty military personnel on their mortgages. They foreclosed on military personnel, illegally forcing them out on the streets, and uh, they had to return some of the homes they took illegally, and reportedly they're being sued for about $48 million right now. So what you have there is J.P. Morgan Chase coming together to steal from the people who are doing most of the work. And uh, not to be outdone, they not only steal from the military, they also steal from the city of brotherly love. Here we have from Philly.com, J.P. Morgan owes Philly $9 million in fraud scam. And uh, they agreed to pay at least $9 million to settle up. But uh, there, it's part of a settlement totaling more than $2 million announced last week. So the Department of Justice is looking into them. But, you know, none of the big heads will probably ever get uh, serve any jail time for this. They'll probably pay a fine, uh, like you saw with the um, uh, Wachovia Bank. And with their uh, money laundering scandal, they, they did almost a billion. They paid a few hundred million in fines. And that's how it works for the big banks. They don't have to pay for what they do. Uh, they, they pay a portion of what they do in fines to the government. Which brings us to our uh, breaking news today. We had an email sent to us from Gerald Salente. And the headline reads from InfoWars today, Salente, CME did not guarantee oversight in MF global scandal. And uh, CME basically oversees its future broker members, which MF Global was a member of before they went bankrupt. And uh, this is interesting. Salente um, kind of paraphrased a lot of this, but Kurt wrote it up. CME's behavior is especially suspect after 600 million fell into a black hole when it was placed into an account with Wall Street giant JP Morgan, which we covered earlier. And as we noted today, it's very suspicious that the weeks prior to MF Global's fall, billionaire investors like the Koch brothers had miraculous foresight to withdraw their money, prompting accusations that the big players got a heads up in advance. And uh, we have a video of CME Executive Chairman Terrence Duffy, and Salente found this last year, and he's basically guaranteeing that your money's safe, they're, they're uh, on the lookout of everything, and, and they've never had anybody lose a single penny, and that they're all, all these uh, futures options are being guaranteed. And let's go to this video right now. Last year, we traded 2.6 billion contracts, representing an underlying value of more than $800 trillion. And since we are the guarantor of every transaction that happens in our markets, we have to guarantee the performance of each and every one of these contracts, which means facilitating the transfer of $800 trillion of risk. To do this, we hold more than $100 billion of collateral to support the transactions that are being done in our markets. So that was CME Executive Chairman Terrence Duffy. And uh, with more on that, we have... The man who broke the news with us today uh, via email, and uh, we posted the article, and that's kind of how the new media is working. It's all through personal connections and, uh, and making things happen to shine lights on these cockroaches. Uh, we have trends forecaster Gerald Salente. Gerald, how's it going? Well, it's not going great. You know, they just came out with the, uh, the judge's decision on releasing some of the money and people like myself that have open accounts and positions in them, it appears that we're not getting any. And some people are getting 60% of their money. And this is in direct contradiction to what Terrence Daly told the people. I mean, is this, what do you call this in legal terms? I don't know the name. Is it fraud? Is it a lie? Is it a broken guarantee? Because listen to the words, quote, since we are the guarantor of every transaction that happens in our markets, we have to guarantee the performance of each and every one of these contracts, which means facilitating the transfer of 800 trillion of risk to do this we hold more than 100 billion of collateral support, of collateral to support the transactions that are being done on our markets. Where's the money, Terry? Where's the guarantee? Yeah, they said they're Terry? holding it in collateral right there. And they're saying it right there. We have over a billion dollars ready to go to cover these things and uh, suppo supposedly to give confidence in the markets, but I guess it doesn't work if uh, if JP Morgan steals it is that the is that the deal we're looking at 
Well, you, you said the first part, and that's the second part. The first part is confidence. Confidence, con game, con man. Is Terry just one con guy, another con man from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, well, the CME group? Well, is who it is a he, con game? Who is he with right there uh, in the video? He's standing next to his good friend, Mayor Daly. Yeah, from the wonderful Daily Machine. You know, right. that's a straight ahead arrow place. So what we're looking at, you know, the, the, uh, the J.P. Morgan Chase, of course, is a whole nother story. It's all members of the club. As I said on Alex's show yesterday, you know, we saw this guy, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, take a perp walk, get thrown into Rikers Island for allegedly screwing a maid. John Corzine... You know, that wonderful guy, the senator from New Jersey, former governor of New Jersey, former top guy with Goldman Sachs, he gets to throw $35,000 of plate dinners for Obama after screwing tens of thousands of people. And, and I'm sure he got a golden parachute when he resigned as well. Well, they, the, the reports are that he got $12 million. Oh, that's all? That's what the reports are. Wow. I wonder how much of that could have been your money. I mean, this is totally ridiculous. These guys. It's they, not ridiculous. It's criminal. It is. And I want to know what's going on here. And everybody listening, get a hold of this Duffy character. And either he's going to eat his words or retract them. Because as I said, I don't know the legal term. Is it fraud? Is it a lie? What is it? It's a broken guarantee. What do you call that in the real world? So what they're doing is they're conning people as he puts on this big press conference about, look at me, what kind of guy I am. Look at the money that we spend. Look what we do. Here's what we got. You know, let's get it. You know, what's going on here? Justice. Listen, I just got a ticket. Catch this. I didn't obey a parking sign, a stop sign. I didn't know you had a, they spoke, but I didn't obey one, the officer says. I roll through it. And so what I get is a $150 fine. $150 for rolling through a stop sign in Little Red Hook, New York. This is the kind of thing. How about that lady, her husband, they got, they got handcuffed and taken to jail, their kid taken away from them for eating a chicken sandwich they came out to what, $4 that they didn't pay for in Arizona. But Corzine gets a free ride. And con men like, like Duffy out there, they throw out these, these lines to sucker people in. Where's the money? I already lost money. He said he was going to guarantee it. Where is it? How come no one's calling them on the carpet? I'll well, tell you why. Tell us why. Because they're members of the White Shoe Boys Club. It's justice, go. just us, not them. Well, we're reporting earlier too, um, earlier this summer, uh, a JP Morgan banker stole $1.2 million. He got two years in prison. That's it, $1.2 million. Yeah, and he's one, probably one of the little guys. Oh, he's a total little guy. He was a, yeah. he was a bank teller. He was probably mid-level somewhere in there. And um, you know, he was uh, forging people's accounts, transferring stuff offshore. Um, using fake names, you know, stuff if you or I did 20 to 30 years in the federal penitentiary, you know. Well, you know, that's why they call these guys brokers, because you're broker than when you started. <laughs> I mean, that's no joke. You know, this is a big con game, a broker. Yeah, they break everybody. Oh, no, keep your money in there. Don't worry about it. Hey, everything's safe. Brokers. It's the perfect name. Yeah, have they contacted you at all uh, since this started breaking? Anybody contacted you from, I got from MF one Global? Call. I got one call from the guy that's taken over my account. He couldn't tell me anything. It's still up in the air. It's going on three weeks. Yeah. You know, this is my hard-earned money. I break, I work really hard. I work around the clock. You know, I know there's no silver spoons in my family. You know, this is my savings. Mm -hmm. And I got some crook like Corzine taking it. As I said before, a lot of people would have been better off if the SOB died in that car crash he had several years ago. Because him staying alive was only another free pass to screw a lot of people. And where is he? 
How come he's not going to jail? Every one of us gets busted until we're proven innocent. We're guilty. Hey, take a ride. Have one drink too many. You know, one little major decimal point over the, over the drinking limit. Man, some goon, you know, slaps handcuffs on you and throws you in the slammer. You know, look at these people, at these protest people, spraying grannies with pepper spray. Where are all you tough cops, huh? Where are you? What are you, afraid of Corzine? That's well, what it is. They're out beating up hippies right now because that's the real problem. People speaking up and saying that, you know, they may not know all the answers, but they know they're not happy right now. And they know that this country used to be great and that it stood for something. And now we're, we're uh, you know, we're left with being nickel and dime by the state for every little thing under the sun. And, you know, in your case, you're getting uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars stolen right out under your nose when it's supposed to be guaranteed. That's right. Right here it says it. Yeah, play that tape over and over and over. Everybody should take that tape and play it viral. Send it. I'll get Duffy's email and send it to you so everybody could send it to him. Exactly. This well, is what's going on. And, you know, here's something else. The only time in the scriptures that when Jesus lost his temper was when he threw the money changes out of the temple. He beat him with a cane. That's right. Boy, I'd like to beat this guy with a cane. A little Singapore justice. That's right. Well, Gerald, we appreciate you uh, sending, giving us the heads up on this and doing the research because, you know, it's, it's people like us that are going to change this thing and at least, you know, shine, shine some lights on these roaches. So we, uh, we appreciate you very much, and we hope this works out. We hope you get your money back. Please keep us informed. And uh, you can uh, catch up with Gerald at the uh, Trends, was it TrendsResearch.com? Or trendsjournal.com. Or trendsjournal.com. There you go. Thank you very much, Gerald. You take care. Thank you, Rob. Wow. So there you go. You have to do your own investigation and uh, find find the evidence against the creeps. And uh, that's just another just another example of what we go through here. Just want to remind everybody before we go to break. If you're not a member of PrisonPlanet.tv, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, please consider doing a subscription. It's uh, right now we have two great specials running. Uh, the first one is the Patriot deal for a yearly subscription. It's only $39.95. And uh, we also have the Info Warrior deal, which is it, it includes the Alex Everything special, which is every documentary Alex has made. It's included with a free year of PrisonPlanet.tv, and that's only $129.95. So you could have 18 presents right there, plus a full year subscription that you can share with up to six people. So if you're not a member of Prison Plan TV, please consider supporting us so we can keep giving you the news that the mainstream media is not going to report on, that they don't want to report on. Because right now, if they were to cover this MF Global scandal, they'd be reporting on their friends and buddies and the people that back them. So you're not going to see them really do any hard-hitting investigation on this. You're going to see people here. You're going to see people like Gerald Salente. You see Alex Jones, uh, Webster Tarpley. You know, we're bringing the real news. Webster Tarpley's on the ground uh, in Syria right now. Nobody's reporting on it. We've reported on it. So uh, please consider becoming a member. And uh, we're going to be coming back with Andrew Kautz from Digital Trends. And we're going to cover uh, a little bit on Henry Kissinger, Herman Cain, and all the rest of these demons out there. It's InfoWars Nightly News. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. And we're back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, sitting in. Alex is uh, out in the Southwest, kind of reminiscing on his trip that he made a long time ago, many years ago, when he made uh, America Destroyed by Design. So we're going to have lots of great reports coming from Alex throughout the days. Uh, Aaron Dykes will be hosting tomorrow. And uh, then we have Mike Adams on Monday. And Paul Joseph Watson will be sitting in from across the pond. Uh, he'll be going Tuesday, and then Aaron again back Wednesday, and then we'll have Alex. 
So uh, we got a lot more left of the show. We got uh, a writer for uh, Digital Trends, Andrew Kautz, coming up next. But uh, let's get into a few more stories first. Well, we got the big man, Herman Cain, the godfather of pizza. And uh, he reportedly met with war criminal globalist Henry Kissinger. And uh, there's a quote here. Dr. Kissinger turned down my offer to be Secretary of State, Kane told the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel in an interview. He's perfectly happy doing what he's doing, which is probably, uh, well, I don't know. There's a paper in Rome when, uh, back in the day when Kissinger was coming to visit, it said, lock up your children. That comes from uh, uh, Bob Chapman said that in an interview with Alex Jones. So we do know that Kissinger is involved with a few things. In fact, he's wanted. He's a wanted man. Oh, man, it is an act of insanity and national humiliation to have a law prohibiting the president from ordering assassination. He's quoted as saying, uh, geez, this guy is a total lunatic. He's masterminded the killing of over 600,000 people in Cambodia. Uh, he helped Suwarto in, invade East Timor. And what else did he do? Oh, and then he helped engineer and protect the Pinochet uh, coup and regime of torture and murder. So here you have Herman Cain, guy running for president, who's courting a mass murderer, a man who engineered the killing of many human beings. And uh, it makes me sick. And that's probably why Cain's falling down in the polls, because people are starting to smell a big rat cooking in that pizza oven. How would you define winning in Afghanistan right now as you're looking at it as a candidate? My point is the experts and their ad advice and their input would be the basis for me making that decision. And uh, ugh, nasty stuff. Let's move on to body scanner news. TSA backtracks on body scanner radiation study promise. Apparently John Pistol was going around telling people, yeah, we're going to do more studies. We know, we know, but now he's kind of backing off. Uh, he has a quote here in a Senate hearing earlier this week. It is my strong belief in those my strong belief is those machines are still completely safe. If the determination is that the IG study is not sufficient, then I will look at still yet another additional study. He also said to CNN, there are those who continue to express concerns, so I want to do everything that I can to reassure those people that those machines are safe as possible. Well, now it turns out, well, you know, maybe we're not going to do those studies that we were talking about. And why? Why does anyone want to do those studies? Well, back earlier in the summer, Cancer surges in body scanner operators. TSA launches cover-up. And you can see the little picture there of the uh, sheep going through the body scanner, and there's the little TSA minion standing right next to it. And uh, TG Daily is, uh, is who we sourced in that article, and they have a couple quotes here. They got some, uh, some quotes from the uh, Freedom Information Request, and it was Epic who actually found this stuff out. The Electronic Privacy Information Center says the TSA staff have been concerned that a large number of workers have been falling victim to cancer, strokes, and heart attacks. But the documents show that TSA's response was simply to tell them, because TSA systems comply with federal regulations, the increased risk of developing radiation-induced cancer in later life is extremely small, no greater than other risks that people routinely accept in their daily lives. They also went on to say... <laughs> This is just getting crazier and crazier. One set of documents reveals that even after TSA employees identified cancer clusters possibly linked to radiation exposure, the agency failed to issue employees dosimeters, safety devices that could assess the level of radiation exposure. Another document indicates that DHS mix, mischaracterized the findings of NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, stating that NIST had affirmed the safety of the body scanners. And this came out later and said, no, actually, we didn't do that. But we also have another study conducted by Dr. David Brenner, head of Columbia University Center of Radiological Research, found that the body scanners are likely to lead to an increase in a common type of skin cancer called basal cell carcinoma, which affects the head and neck. Following the study, Brenner urged medical authorities to look at his work, pointing to the dangerous notion of mass scanning millions of people without proper oversight. So who is David Brenner? Who is he? Well, he's head of research at the Center for Radiological Research at Columbia University. David Brenner focuses on developing mechanistic models for the effects of ionizing radiation on living systems. 
This man knows what he's talking about, okay? Compared to who tells you that these things are perfectly safe? Oh, there she is right there. Destroying people's freedom of speech and freedom of peaceful assembly. It's uh, Janet Napolitano. She's telling you these things are safe. So who do you believe? You believe a doctor of radiological research or do you believe that creature right there looking at your screen? It's totally disgusting that we have creatures like that running around telling people what they need to do and how they need to do it. And, oh, please, can we put our hand down your pants? In other news, Internet Titans fight SOPA with a full-page New York Times ad. It appears, uh, well, NSA fronts like Google and Facebook and, and Yahoo, well, maybe not Yahoo, but all these other big giants got together and they want to stop the Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA as it's known, which will require companies and internet service providers to become policemen, like the Google police, and block access to any website that the entertainment industry believes engages in, enables, or facilitates copyright infringement. And with more on this breaking news of uh, the big giants of the internet actually going against this Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA, we invite Andrew Kautz to the show. He's a writer for Digital Trends, who broke this story actually today, or at least that's what we link to. And uh, he's been writing for Digital Trends for a few years now. He, Digital Trends is a website that covers consumer electronics. They go into the legal, political spectrums a little bit when it applies. And uh, we'd like to invite him here. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So tell us, tell us about SOPA. Well, SOPA is a bipartisan, uh, it's a bill in, that's currently under consideration in Congress. Uh, it has bipartisan support, and essentially it gives the entertainment industry the ability to uh, flag websites that they believe are uh, basically violating their copyright in some way or another. And then it requires websites like Google to shut down those uh, access to those websites. So it's a, a web, inter, internet censorship bill is what it's being uh, referred to colloquially. So um, that's more or less what it does. And so why do, why do we have the big giants here coming and, and putting a full page ad in the New York Times saying they don't agree with this? Why, why do you think they're up in arms about this? Well, I'd only be speculating if I said their exact motivation, but uh, I think it puts a lot of pressure on them to enforce this law. So they're the ones who are going to be uh, turning off websites, essentially, not not specifically uh, pulling the plug, you know, physically, but they're going to be blocking access to them, and they're going to be required to do so through their services. So you wouldn't be able to find a particular website that someone finds infringing on copyrights through Google, for instance, and Google would be responsible for blocking that through its search engine. So it puts a lot of responsibility on these big tech companies and internet uh, service providers. So I think that they're against it mainly just because of the responsibility that puts on them, even though they're not responsible necessarily for putting this content online. Right, it turns them into the policeman instead of what their job is, which is to provide internet service. Exactly. And, and uh, does this have any um, uh, infringements going uh, worldwide, uh, internationally? Like, like I know Sweden is a, is a haven for some of these, quote, pirate uh, websites, piracy websites. What, what are the implications uh, worldwide? Well, uh, the bill specifically targets foreign rogue sites, uh, quote, unquote, rogue sites. So uh, you're going to have a lot of international sites being shut down or blocked because of this. So... Uh, that's one way. I know uh, that the uh, European Commission, uh, EU Commission, uh, is investigating it now, and they are uh, specifically against SOPA um, because of some of the uh, pressures it's going to put on the EU, um, you know, based on the, the Americans enacting this law. So um, I, I don't know the details of, of their support or or uh, or how they're against it exactly but i do know that um there has been some pushback against it in the eu okay well it doesn't look very good what what do you think the chances are of this bill getting passed and who's uh who wrote this piece of legislation this loving piece of legislation i don't know the specific author of it i, I know that there are i believe uh 15 republicans and 10 democrats who are supporting this bill. So it has uh, pretty uh, broad bipartisan support. Uh, and 
I, I don't think that it's going to get passed in the current form. Uh, there's been so much pressure to amend the bill and to, uh, to lessen its scope that I don't think there's much political capital that the people who are supporting it have left to, uh, to go forward with it in its current state. I know that uh, one of the sponsors, co-sponsors of the bill uh, kind of wavered yesterday after the hearings saying that uh, there's, there's some, you know, they can make some leeway in, in, in some ways uh, to make this a little bit less broad and uh, make it less of a creating the, you know, great firewall of America is, is you know, as some of the critics are calling it. Right. Yeah, this sort of uh, looks like it could turn us into some sort of Chinese type thing. Any They could claim anything being piracy, any type of information like WikiLeaks putting out information that it got leaked to it. That could be claimed piracy is, is what it seems to me. And it sort of reminds me of uh, back when I was in college and the MP3s were big and people were downloading them everywhere. And then they finally came out with their ruling, which, you know, led to this business of, of uh, iTunes and Apple, you know, charging 99 cents for, for songs that people were getting for free and sharing between themselves. Right. This is a continuation of that fight. Uh, the entertainment industry, movie industry, the music industry, they've not found a way to combat piracy through adapting their business models uh, in, in any meaningful way. Uh, they, you've started to see some of that with the emergence of Spotify, Mog, some of these other uh, music streaming websites, Netflix. So you're starting to see some adaptation there. Um, but SOPA is definitely a continuation of that fight that you saw start with Napster. And I think that you're going to find that they're going to have to amend this bill in one way or another. Otherwise, there's going to be just, there's just too much pressure on uh, politically on the people who are sponsoring it to uh, to change it. Otherwise, they're going to be you know facing some tough fights in, in the years to come. Yeah, and if it doesn't, you're going to have the Google police knocking at your door. And who wants that? They exactly. know where you live. They certainly do. Uh, well, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, yesterday, we, we printed a story called DOJ, make it a federal crime to lie on the Internet. And uh, we actually quoted you in this one, too. Um, basically, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, CFAA, they want to uh -huh. change that to, uh, to basically go after people lying about their, their age and their, their uh, weight, whatever. What is the deal with this thing? This is insane, it looks like. It is insane, and it's not that they're, they want to change it. They basically just want the bill to be, which is very vague right now, they want to take an extremely broad uh, interpretation of the bill and be able to apply it towards violations of terms of service. Um, so that means the terms of service of any website. If you use Google, for instance, uh, Google has in its terms of service that no one under uh, the age of contract may use their search engine. Uh, in most states, the age of contract is 18. So if you're 17 years old and you search anything on Google, which every 17 year old does presumably, uh, you are in violation of CFAA and could technically be charged under uh, cr uh, federal criminal law because of that. So this seems like something petty that they, they could use. They wanna get you on something else, but they don't have the proof. Well, we'll get them on this terms of service thing. It's very broad. And, uh, you know, I think it's apropos that it's the Department of Justice doing this when uh, they just got caught sending a bunch of guns to Mexico trying to frame the Second <laughs> Amendment. So, exactly. uh, you know, they want to turn everybody into theirs. Now, looking into some other articles that, that we've covered over the years, um, this one earlier this summer, embedding YouTube videos may become a felony. And um, if, if a website amends a YouTube video that is determined to have infringed on a copyright and more than 10 people view it on that website, the owner or other owners associated with that website could face up to five years in prison. Now, this was uh, coming out of Senate Bill 978. Has, uh, what's the status of this bill? Uh, it's still under consideration, as I, as I understand it, um, and so it's pending. And... I don't, again, I don't believe that this one has much chance of passing in its current form, though, as you can see, between this and SOPA and a number of other uh, pieces of legislation that are currently in the works or under consideration, you're, uh, there's a concerted effort by the, you know, the Hollywood lobbyists and other entertainment lobbyists to pass legislation that, uh, you know, protects copyrights in a much more drastic way than it current than it 
uh, currently is uh, and protect than they currently are protected. So um, this is this is part of a bigger story of them trying to you know protect their intellectual property. What this looks like to me is that they're they're kind of setting the stage for a uh, cyber patriot act that something big happens to the internet most likely caused by a government agency whether it's our government or the israelis or you know any other you know anybody who's developing stuxnet out there um mm -hmm. you know they they cause this problem and then all of a sudden wow now we have the solution it's clamped down on everybody talking about anything posting videos sharing files i mean this this stinks to high heaven um when i look at it and uh uh, it really, it, it, it scares me. I mean, what, what do you see the future of this happening? Uh, do you see the same thing going on here? Well, absolutely. I mean, I, I can't say that, you know, where exactly it's headed, but it's extremely important to be uh, keeping a watchful eye on every piece of legislation that affects the general public, affects freedom of speech, and affects our access to information. So uh, while all of these bills might have uh, innocuous purposes, at least on the surface, uh, they certainly put together, or, or in the case of SOPA, can have some, you know, malicious uh, effects, and, and especially towards freedom of speech and freedom to access information. And so, uh, you know, it certainly seems as though we're headed down the wrong track with all of this legislation, even though I, I do, I believe in the protection of intellectual property. I think that's important, but I think at the same time, uh, it can't come at the cost of uh, our civil liberties. I agree. Now let's uh, switch to another subject, the EAS test that, they, that we had uh, just last week or week and a half ago. Right. Um, uh, they, apparently they wanted to do this on the web, and, but they had some failures going on with there. What, did you watch the EAS test? Did you experience it? Did you have any outages? I didn't see it as it happened. Uh, I did, I did re read about it and, and, uh, and watch some video of it. Uh, after the fact, uh, and I know that it was a pretty uh, big public failure. Um, and, you know, it's not totally enacted right now. So they're still, you know, obviously they're testing out the testing system um, is the way it, it, it seems to me at the moment. Right. To suddenly put in some sort of cyber patriot act that's going to take everybody's rights. Uh, back in 2009, I, I made a documentary called Police State for the Rise of FEMA, and we cover in it this. Um, well, one of the big stories was Rod Beckstrom, who was with the NSA, uh, suddenly deciding to quit because he thought their uh, mission was becoming too involved into the American people. And uh, in that, we found, you know, a couple other articles in New York. They were uh, testing an Xbox-based alert system that uh, state authorities are testing a plan that would see the emergency management office issue alerts over online gaming networks in addition to regular channels. And... Um, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on that type of uh, uh, type of government intrusion coming into our online games, into our Xboxes? I mean, anywhere where people want to be, it seems like the government wants to be in there telling you what to do at some point. Right. I mean, personally, uh, I find any uh, intrusion of the government to be distasteful at the very least uh, and possibly, you know, uh, an extreme infringement on my civil liberties at the worst. So, um, you know, as a gamer, I don't want to be interrupted by something if I'm if I'm in the middle of playing a video game. But that's you know more of just a uh, you know a preference thing. It's not really that big of a deal on on its surface. But if it's being used for uh, broader purposes other than to let me know that there is an earthquake about to happen, if that were possible, or some some other natural disaster, or uh, or a terrorist attack, or something along those lines, then uh, you know. I, I would be uncomfortable about, with it if it's not if it's only used to, if it's not only used for for that kind of warning purpose. Yeah, the government seems concerned with uh, domestic terrorists. Uh, from what I've seen, they want to uh, go after people, and they put out videos of this who are buying gold, uh, selling cars on the side of the road, um, walking around with backpacks and taking photos. I mean, that that describes you know a lot of Americans that I know who go out right. there and do this t type of stuff. So, I mean, by putting these little intrusion tentacles into everything that we do online, over the media, over, you know, basically everywhere where, where people are, you know, we look at TVs now, I'm surrounded by them. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really scary and it's a precedent that I don't think is going to end well. And um, I don't have 
good feelings about this in the future. What, what are your thoughts on the future of this and, and our, our real cybersecurity? I mean, do you think it, they could just take down the internet with one kill switch? Well, I don't know the technical uh, uh, abilities necessarily, but I do know that, for instance, Verizon uh, had an outage that uh, just last week or two weeks ago that uh, killed internet access for people, millions of people across the country of, of their customers. Um, so I do know that the system is connected uh, in a way that it's possible to shut down access to for a lot of people. And, you know, I, I think that as the, you know, the internet provides us with the ability to get our voice out in a way that we never have before. Um, but it also provides other people to look in on us in a way that we never have before. And so I, you know, we can see Big Brother getting closer and closer every day um, if you're one to be watching for something of that nature. So I definitely think we all have to be careful. And uh, I, I, I'm not necessarily convinced that every uh, bill that comes in that has to do with the internet that comes before the Senate or the or the House is going to be uh, necessarily in, uh, used to infringe upon our civil liberties or to uh, enact a police state or anything of that nature necessarily. But uh, in a democracy, we all have to pay attention to how our government is acting and make sure that it's acting for us and not for itself. Eternal vigilance. You got it. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us. Keep on writing, and uh, we will probably keep linking to your articles because uh, I think you got a good head on your shoulders, and you're definitely on the lookout for what's going on out there, especially when it comes to the government and uh, infringing on our on our personal freedom. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Well, that's our show today. Uh, I've had a great time hosting my first time. Maybe I'll be back here again if, if Jones likes my performance. And uh, of course, I want to let people know, put that name key back up. I would like to show people, I have my email address right there. It's robd at infowars.com. If you got any news tips, uh, guest ideas, anybody you think we should have on the show, you know, drop me an email. Let me know. Let me know that you're watching. Let me know what you like, what you'd like to see changed, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Also, don't forget, if you're not a member of PrisonPlanet.tv and you're watching this uh, on YouTube, please consider subscribing. It's very easy to do. We have a couple great plans for you right now, especially with this Christmas season. Um, our first one is a Patriot plan. It is uh, $39.95. I think we'll run that till the end of January. And the other one is our Info Warrior pack, which is 70% uh, off. It's all of Alex's 18 DVDs for $129.95. And the Patriot, is, uh, Patriot pack is $39.95, and that's a year of Prison Planet TV. And with the Info Warrior pack, you also get a full year of PrisonPlanet.tv. So, with that in mind, please consider supporting us. We appreciate it, and keep on watching. Alex will be back next week. Aaron's on tomorrow. we got Mike Adams on Monday. And then we're going to have Paul Joseph Watson hosting the show from England on Tuesday. And um, so that's about it. Thank you for watching. It's InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm your host, Rob Dew. Take care.